Hi everyone, Hello. my name is Brendan Burns and I'm the CEO of C.me and hopefully you all know about us, but we are a global platform um, and our mission is to help identify phenomenal, ambitious emerging artists from around the world, um, amplify their career and voice and help them connect with economic opportunity. And so I'm super pleased today to be with uh, Maria Jose Sanchez. Um, who flew all the way from Bogota, Colombia, and is one of the finalists in our current exhibition here called Emerge. Would you please just tell us like two words about yourself and um, like what your experience has been so far? So, hi everybody, my name is Maria Jose. Um, I'm very excited to be here. My experience has been awesome. I've met a lot of incredible people, talented people, and I'm just excited to be here sharing my art. And by here, not only do we mean New York City, but specifically, we're at the Blue Gallery, which is sort of, I've been saying, like downtown, but in Midtown, mm -hmm. <coughs> um, on the east side of uh, Manhattan on East 46th Street. And it's just an amazing uh, space that has a terrific vibes. So we've been having a great time. Yeah. Why don't we all walk and see Maria Jose's artwork? Which is unusual, I will say, in the context of, um, of the overall exhibition. So we probably have, you know, a little over 20 artists all together in this group show. And you'll see, um, you know, paintings, uh, you'll see uh, some digital artwork. Uh, there's sculptures actually in one of the other rooms. But Maria Jose's work is quite unusual, and it's behind us. So maybe you tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I paint mostly, but I call my, my work a painting installation, because for me it's important not just to see the painting, but to feel it and just move around it, just to like understand it better, like the feeling that I want to share. Um, this is from a series called Poor Memory, so I work about time and my work is mostly uh, of accumulation. I think that time is not ephemeral, but is rather accumulative. Um, so every moment of our life, every second of our, of our existence, our choices, our decision making, everything makes us who we are. So with this, I just want to enhance all those spe specific moments and then turn them into paintings. I just think that they can be accumulated in layers. So some of these layers are here. This is a series of seven paintings. You're seeing two here and one there. Um, so those, are, those layers are what I am and how I feel. That it's that one that is just written text, handwriting of hours and hours of investigation that come together to explain and show what I feel, um, the places that, in, that, I, that I go to, the body that I inhabit, this is the lineage. So for me, all of those times, frames, are compacted and they're put it together into images that are this one. I, I love and have been struck by the way you write and articulate about time, and I'm gonna read it for everybody here, just a couple sentences. Mm -hmm. Time changes what we are and how we are. It alters our shape, our relationships, and how we perceive reality. But it is difficult to notice it because we are not attentive. This is why I paint. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that, um, that sentiment, that concept, because it uh, makes me think of the term flow state, you know? and how when you're so focused on what you can do, you can forget about time, right? Maybe you'd elaborate on that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Um, so, we, our life, it goes so fast and we don't notice it, that not just when we are aware of doing something, but when we're not, days, days can just pass by and then we don't understand how we change and what makes us who we are. So we just stop for a moment and understand that everything that we have gone through, every, every minute of our lives is here with us 
that's a very nice way I like to contemplate existence because it's a whole coincidence but not of things that come together for this to exist. Like right now, we are just here uh -huh. and it's super fun. Let's move this here to, to go behind the veil. So, welcome to my veils. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. So, for example, this one took almost a month and eight days of writing and investigating and the, there's so, sociology there, quantum physics, uh, physics. Um, there is a lot of investigation of, in order to understand how the world is made up. And by just under, trying to understand it, because I, I know that I cannot fully understand it and I will not. Um, I can understand myself a little bit and this is like an overwhelming thing when you see other thoughts you just can understand that there's so much more beneath a person so that's why I write so much and you wrote all of this yeah of course and it doesn't tell a story or how did you approach the writing um this ones are not stories at all they're just um, thoughts so they, it doesn't have like a be beginning and an end. Mm -hmm. It's just just hours and hours of thinking. It's kind of like a journal, a big, very big end. Do you start it in a journal? Like as you're in your process, are you taking work from a journal and then putting it on the silk? Or? Of course, yeah. yeah. I've always had a journal. Yeah. So I'm mean, like, writing has something very interesting for me. And it's like when you draw or when you paint, <laughs> you always do it on top of it. I mean like, you have layers, yeah. you know? And if you draw, there's always a layer and you can work into and into. In writing, it's a register. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's beautiful because you can measure time by writing, too. Do you write every day? Of course. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I have a question for you that's somewhat related, but have you ever heard of the concept of a, the time, of a time billionaire? No, what's that? It's, um, I'm, I'm forgetting the, the person who coined the concept, but basically the idea is that when you're young, your wealth can be measured in the time that you have left. Mm -hmm. And you spend that time um, on different things. Most of us are not conscious, but this is really kind of what you were talking about before. Most of us are not conscious of how we choose to spend that time because we're not in the moment making a conscious choice. So, but when you're young, you're a time billionaire because that's how, you know, how many seconds you have or minutes you have or whatever. And as you get older, that wealth, even if you've accumulated money, the wealth as measured by time has dissipated to some extent. And so as a construct, I think it's a very helpful way to um, be intentional about spending time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's. Yeah, those are other words to put in there. Like. <clears throat> hmm. So in, with the veils, are they, they really, like we only had room um, to show the three, unfortunately. Do you typically um, show them, se it's seven, seven all together, right? Yeah. yeah. You show them together. Yeah, it's the first time I've shown them apart. But I think I love the exercise because at the same time, you can understand them better by putting putting them aside so I think it's a good exercise of, of curatory and like and what the space gives us as a person and an artist you really strike me as as someone that has really varied interests and in inputs mm -hmm. and um, I, uh, I I find that fascinating because it to me it's clearly informed how you've approached the work. And I'm wondering, like specifically, I guess this is both from content and process. Um, you, you also teach, right? <clears throat> You're an academic. Mm -hmm. And how does that impact your work and how do you balance those needs? So that's a very good question. I consider myself that I'm part of a triad. So art is my voice. Education is how I share that voice and cultural manager, man, management is 
how I create platforms for that voice to be heard. Mm -hmm. So for education, I feel like it's so important to be conscious of ourselves, but then put some seeds on other people so they can do that as well. My teaching um, in this moment of my life um, is very, very interesting because I don't teach a class by itself. I mean, like, um, what I do is that I work in a class that uh, promotes cultural management. So I create critical thinking so the students create um, conceptual work. Um, and I do all the process with them from the beginning when they have one idea till they do that idea. So it's so cool because I, I can understand every process of, of their of their yeah of, of what they do and how they feel and what they want to do and then when we come to the point that it's done it's beautiful because you yeah. see how they grow so education is giving and I really feel that yeah. that's very important it's not keeping the knowledge for you yourself right. but then share it I, I you know I spend a lot of time myself teaching mm -hmm. and uh, it um, I always call it the gift that keeps on giving, you know, because the more you give, the more you get, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing, my work, I think, sound is, to me, it sounds familiar to what you do in that. I think teaching is almost like the wrong term. What, what you're doing a lot of times is helping someone else um, recognize the ideas that they have in them and then curating external knowledge and a and a process so that they can follow to amplify or get the most out of that idea. And, and there's, a, there's another super interesting thing for me, you know, particularly as I've gotten older, you know, is that one of the things that happens as you get older is you become insulated from the most dangerous ideas, right? Or the, the newest things. You become um, almost self-protected, sometimes by yourself, and sometimes by the world around you because it expects you to get away from discomfort. Mm -hmm. And I always say that uh, um, part of the role of exploring yourself as an artist or as a business person or, or whatever is getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because mm -hmm. if you can do that, then you can just move forward, mm -hmm. you know? And so I'm fascinated by you know, your process, because I, I mean, you, you may not have said it that way, but when I see you and hear you talk, I'm like, she's on that path. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Thank you. No, no, it's great. You know, can, can you also talk to us about, um, you're part of M Collective? Yeah, so, um, some years ago, I founded the first art incubator in Colombia. So I had this idea that um, artists don't are not alone and we are not getting anywhere if we're by ourselves so I created this platform co-created a platform where I could um, help some young artists emerging artists as myself so we could grow together um, because of COVID that closed that was a house that had one gallery and six studios where we did 14 exhibitions and we rented those spaces and we did a lot of workshops with curators and people from the from the field <coughs> when it it was done and COVID struck I mean like a lot of things yeah. happened but I I still have the same feeling you know I still know that we are not getting anywhere so if we are alone the are problems haven't gone away yeah right. it's exactly the same yeah. thing so I understood that I don't need the platform, I don't need the house, I don't need all the big things as you, but I just need the connections. So I partnered up with two amazing artists and we help each other. Actually, because of one of them, I'm here today. So uh, I'm very grateful for that. And the other one has, uh, it's opening a gallery in Bogota uh, and we're gonna work together with her. So. For me, it's very special to feel like we are together in everything and when I have a good thing, I can share it with them. I'm not selfish at all. I mean, like, I always try to do that and I know they do too. Yeah. So that feeling of giving yeah. needs to be in every part so we can 
grow as a, as a it, it, it's field. A, it's a fascinating uh, sort of problem set. That's how I think about it, mm -hmm. as a problem set, because if you're an artist and, you, and you're ambitious and you want to get better, mm -hmm. the more um, reps you have, the more work you can put in, the more technically proficient you get. And when the, the, the technical proficiency intersects with the right inspiration, then you start making really good art. But the requirements to market yourself and you know and all these other mechanical and logistical things, um, if those don't happen, you can't sustain yourself, right? And so it's it's we talk about that a lot at CME. You know, I mean, in essence, the model I like to say the model that we're pursuing is um, using technology and community and behavioral incentives. I know that might sound geeky, but <laughs> to um, uh, to create a collective that is going to have capitalistic outcomes for the people involved, mm -hmm. you know, so that they can spend more time making more better work. Yeah, yeah so I'm super fascinated by uh, by your experience. I'm very you know? fascinated by seeing you too. Yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. I, I like to say, you know, artists want to be monogamous, but um, collectors and art lovers want to be poly. <laughs> right, because they want to they want to you know absorb work from lots and lots of different artists. But most artists think um, just love me, right? And so trying to figure out how to form relationships where everyone benefits from sharing their own beauty and strength and network and joy and all that stuff is the path I think we're on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely agree. So, well. Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> and if you guys have a chance, come see us online at see.me. Um, look at the Emerge exhibition. Uh, you'll see Maria Jose's work and uh, many other people.